What is up guys, Alex here. So this is how I painted my Arachnorock. Uh, this is not a how-to, this is just how I painted mine. So pretend this picture here, um, take this like six stages worse, like blue and red paint just everywhere, um, and just terrible quality. That's what I had to work with. Um, so here I am just retouching up some of the blue, um, still on like the, the crevices and uh, where it meets the flesh. Um, that I had to touch up. There's just blue and red paint everywhere. It was even worse than this before. Next, I'm gonna go over the eyes with a blood letter glaze, just to kind of give it more of a, a glazy effect, because uh, the transition on the eyes was not uh, the world's greatest to start. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's what I did there. I also later um, overcoated it with blood for the blood god, god just to kind of give it that soaking red kind of look. Um, I don't think I should show that, but I will later. Um, just have, it'll just randomly look a lot better, and that's when I use Blood for the Blood Guide over top. So next I'm going to be taking my corn red base color, um, and using a small brush, I'm going to touch in the red areas on the flesh. Uh, just kind of neaten it up, make sure that it's all the same color, because when I got it, it was actually like a multi-colored, I don't know, they weren't all the same color and that really bothered me. So I went through with the corn red and touched it all up. Next what I did was pretty cool, I took a Screamer Pink and a new Shopti Bone and about 50-50 mix with a bunch of water and then I started to paint the raised areas of the flesh. Um, so that kind of gave it a growing kind of unnatural look to the flesh in the spider and it made it uh, look much better because later on I um, cut the ratio down on the screamer pink and I did like a 75 to 25 and I painted even more of the raised areas and then what I did is I put a purple wash over top so I kind of blended it all together gave it that pretty cool look unfortunately I still have no idea how to focus on the camera that's just me being a pleb but then I took my leviathan purple wash and washed in all of the skin area so I kind of brought it all together made it look really cool and yeah. And coming up now, I'm gonna be using a lighter grayish blue. I forget the name of it, Thunderhawk blue, I believe. I'm not quite sure, but anyways, a gray blue, and I'm going to be highlighting the carapace, or whatever the spider armor is called. I'm gonna say carapace for now, because I don't actually really know off the top of my head. But yeah, so I'm highlighting the top edges um, as if it was coming from the light source, and yeah. Now I'm just fixing those dreaded yellow horns that bothered me ever so much. Um, so what I did is I took Ushapi Bone, um, a brownish color, as it, almost like a Zandri dust, and I just kind of gave the shadowing effect and I put a little bit of gray in with it as well. Just to kind of cover it all up and make it look better once I put a wash over top layer. And here's one of the pretty cool parts. So what I wanted to do is I took Nolan Oil and put it all over the horns. I also took the Nolan Oil and put it on the fangs as well. So this, these fangs, I put a gray effect and kind of shaded a little bit lighter. It's hard to see on the video because I wanted it to be quite so. But what it ended up doing is it ended up making it look a lot more natural and kind of blended all the colors together and looked fantastic. And I forgot to turn the light on while I was recording. That's just me being a dummy. So now you can probably see just a little bit better. Now here's a pretty cool part. Um, this is one of the effects I love the most. I can do it with larger models. So what I did is I took a blue glaze, a crimson cardboard, and a bow red. So what I did is up on the top part where it's nice and bright, I put the blue. Then while the paint was or while the glaze was still wet, I took the cur the crimson color and put it about halfway down and then I took the red color, the bow red, and put it towards the bottom and then I shaded all the colors together so it gives this natural kind of 
almost um, shading to darkness effect. So one side's nice and light and it slowly goes redder and redder and darker towards the bottom. I love this effect. I feel it looks fantastic on a lot of models. I did it with my Bloodthirster, you might have seen in the wings. That's how I did that kind of effect. And later on when you see pictures, you can definitely tell that it has a slow, gradual shade. Now for the not as interesting parts. So now I painted the stand. I actually want to keep it really nice and dark. So what I did is I actually took uh, Tapus Corrosion, painted two layers of that over top of the wood. So I wanted it to look very um, rustic, not very well maintained, and with all sorts of rubble and dirt on it. Because the actual kit that it comes with, the, the like way that they attached it, makes it actually look very nice. Like someone actually took the time to build this and not very orky so I wanted to make it as dirty as possible and then I also took uh, Xandri dust and painted the webs and Ushabi bone and painted these skulls. So now I'm just kind of shading over everything and dry brushing the stand itself on the wood. I painted in all the details, I figured you guys probably didn't need to see that, me painting some basic stuff, some feathers, some shields and some arrows and things like that. So I mean just imagine painting those, pretty standard. Um, now I shade it all over with null nulls, kind of give it that dirty um, effect and try to kind of bring it all to detail. And then after that I paint all the goblins and those were already uh, based in green um, and they had a wash over top of it but I just basically finished up their clothing, their armor and their spears and their yada yada. I also took a uh, night Goblin and attached him to the top because most of my army is already a Night Goblin army and I really wanted them to kind of fit together. So here I am showing you things not in focus because I don't know how to do that very well yet and that will get better. But here's the Goblins once they're all finished up. They're still wet with Null Oil, that's why they look kind of glazy. And that's the Arachnorock. There's the stand with a catapult and then there it is Total and I feel this model turned out very well. If you guys have any questions, obviously feel free to Comment down below, send me a personal message, say anything you want to see in particular, comment that as well. Hit a like if you guys like what I'm doing, and uh, be sure to subscribe for more. And also, this is for the Itic Beers Painting Challenge. I don't know if I said that earlier, but this is my year's tradition, or my year's um, addition to his challenge. 